have that same exact word and it says, the Lord declares the end from the beginning and that word is Rashid. So when, when the, the first word spoken in Torah is Bereshit, same thing, okay? Beth just means end, so Rashid. So declaring from end, from the end, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and all my pleasure will I do. And in this to our portion, so when, when Abram, we just read, says, well, how shall I know what you've promised that I will inherit the land? He's already promised him that his seed will multiply, and his seed will inherit the land. And so, he says to Abram, take two pairs, there's rams, there's other animals, two pairs of animals, that he then tears in two and place them side by side with a space in between. And there's also two birds that are not torn. And in ancient culture, it was very common for that type of um, practice to be done when making a covenant. So they would, if you're going to sign a contract like we do today, we just sign it with a pen. Um, and now you can sign it online. It's changed quite a lot from ripping animals apart, I think. You know? And then blood brothers, blood, you know, that whole thing, blood, blood covenant, that's become a practice too. Even as kids, you might have done that, where you prick a finger and you put it on someone else's pricked finger and you put your blood together and you're like, you make a pact. So it's the same concept, but so much greater. So Abram has torn these animals apart. And the idea is when you walk through those torn animals, you're saying, if I break whatever I'm agreeing to this day, if I break this covenant, may that happen to me. Does that not sound like Yeshua, who that happened to? So he, break, he rips those animals apart. He's waving away the vultures and the, the, the animals that are trying to descend on the carcasses. Okay? And then it says this, as the sun was setting, a deep sleep fell upon Avram, and a dread, even a great, great darkness fell upon him. The first time a deep sleep was used, this is the second time, the first time is when the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he took one of his ribs when he made his bride. And he's walking that covenant for his bride, right? Yeshua is walking the covenant for the bride. He does uses the same exact word to put him into that deep sleep, and it's a blessing in Hebrew to see when, a fr when the word appears for the first time, and what's the context of it, and the depth of it. And great darkness fell upon him. Well, in three of the four Gospels, it says that same exact thing. When Yeshua breathes his last, it says, and great darkness fell over the earth. And so it came to pass that when the sun went down, there was thick darkness. Behold, a smoking furnace and a flaming torch that passed between the pieces and in that day, the Lord Aleph Tav uh, made the Lord Aleph Tav Abram a covenant. The Lord Aleph Tav walks through. Abram is put to sleep. Abram doesn't walk the covenant, and we know that because it's the Lord that keeps the covenant completely. And I kept thinking, this is Passover. You know, maybe we maybe we've we've known that. I don't know, but to me, all week it was like, so this is this is Passover in the windows of time. And there's actually Jewish tradition that does say that this was the day, but this is actually Passover before the first of the months was even proclaimed in the natural to the children of Israel, and that was with Moses when they said, and this shall be the first of your months, and you shall, you know, you will leave Egypt, and the Exodus and the Passover happens, but this is before Passover actually happens in the natural, and this is Yeshua walking through that covenant for us, being split. As the Lord's walking through, he's the one that's split for us, broken for us on that tree. In the same exact time, in the windows of time, Yeshua is hanging on a tree, this having happened to him, this having already been proclaimed to Abram. Wow. And the first time um, that word passed is Passover, is the word that's actually used on Passover. So when the flaming torch passed between, it's the same word, word that's used for when it, um, well, um, Arab. So when, when, the, when the angel of the Lord passes over those houses which have the blood on the doorposts. Okay? So, Bereshit, shared this before, but within Bereshit is the covenant, Barit, and then in the middle is Aish, the fire, and it was the fire that walked the covenant. So from that very first word, those six letters, what just happened in the windows of time, a Passover with, with Abram, with Yeshua on the tree, with the children of, of Israel celebrating the first Passover in, in the natural for them when they were redeemed and saved. This, from the very first word, to me that, that just so burns in my heart 
that just from those six letters, the Lord proclaims everything, the covenant he's made with us. And so that was the first time fire, when, when the uh, fire walks through the covenant, the very first time ish, fire is used, is during that time when the Lord's walking through the covenant. That's very significant. The second time is when Sodom, um, next to our portion, when Sodom is, fire rains down on Sodom. And the third time is when, um, the third or fourth time is when Abraham goes up to the mountain and the Lord says, take a fire. And he has a fire mentioned twice. And the fourth time is the burning bush. I mean, it's all about the covenant. All those instances of fire all relate to the covenant. And so, toward the end of this portion, when um, after the Lord walks the covenant, it says, And in that day the Lord made covenant with Aleph Abram, saying, Unto your seed I have given this Aleph Tav land. And Yeshua says, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. So thank you, Father, for your covenant that you it's everlasting covenant. Layer upon layer in, in Bereshit, in Genesis, layer upon layer, this covenant is built and built and built to remind us of the eternal covenant of the Lord. And why these beautiful peeps are up here is, is because this is our children in, in our orphanage in Haiti. And I had a conversation with Ernst this week, and it was really beautiful. And I just want to leave them up there so as we speak a blessing, the children's blessing, they're actually speaking over us. We can say we're speaking over them, but they speak over us. They lift us up. I think it's every Friday night they gather. And they, they lift us up more than that. But I know they gather like on Fridays, and they specifically pray for this congregation, for all of you here. And they love you all so much. And that's all about the covenant. Because that's been placed within their hearts from the Lord. Will the children come from?